It's the end of the semester. My students are doing final projects and a couple of them wanted to incorporate a gene into their collection. Now, there was only interest from a couple of people, so I didn't want to I didn't want to devote too much time in class to this, especially since we had lots of other things to cover. But I wanted to definitely give them a few tips and I'm going to share them here with you today because there are some design details that are distinctive when it comes to genes. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham and I talk about digital fashion design software and communication on this channel. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, in today's video, I'm going to focus on drawing the sketch and adding the denim details onto the flat sketch. So if you're looking for color CAD techniques, that'll come in a future video. But one of the requirements of the final and something you'll need to do as a denim designer is to create a flat sketch of your actual design with all the trim and stitch details drawn onto the sketch. So that's what I'm focusing on today. If you're not sure how to draw the gene itself, I suggest checking out this video. Not only does it demonstrate how to draw a pan, but it also discusses the four factors you need to consider before you even start sketching your pant. And at least two of them, and I would argue all of them, are critical to drawing a pair of genes. So here are the details, and there's seven of them, that you'll want to include in a traditional denim jeans design. No matter how fashion forward the jeans are, you'll usually find double needle stitching as a design detail somewhere on them. The stitching is usually gold, although I've seen plenty of denim jeans where the stitching is white or a thread color that's dyed to match the denim. The stitch is also usually done with a heavier thread, and you might also hear people refer to it as the tex. In terms of creating this in Illustrator, the most efficient method to add the stitching to a flat sketch is to create a brush. That way, no matter what types of curves you need, you'll always have two rows of parallel stitch lines evenly spaced and running along the path. Now, I've seen people do this using a dashed line, but there's always something weird that happens in the spacing when I do that. So instead, I make two parallel short solid lines, which represents one set of stitches, and then I create a definition box around those lines that incorporate the spacing you want between the stitches. Make sure your definition box has no color, send it to the back, and then drag the stitches and the box to the brushes panel. And now that you've made your brush, you can apply it to any line. And make sure you check out this video to understand how to color the brush and which colorization method works best for different types of brushes. Rivets are normally located on the end of the front pockets. They were originally used to reinforce the jeans in areas where they could be ripped apart, but now that jeans are constructed using more secure stitching, they're added more for design aesthetics. Sometimes a logo or text will be added to the rivets using the trim as another vehicle for branding. However, because they're so small, once they go onto a flat sketch, you don't need to make them overly detailed because you're not gonna see it. When you're creating the trim for a flat sketch that's going into a tech pack, you really only need to create two circles. You'll almost always see a metal shank button used on the center front closure for a jean. It handles the heavier weight of denim fabric well and allows for a little more space for the fabric to sit between the button and the jean when it's closed, which is helpful considering that denim is usually pretty thick, even lightweight denim. Like the rivets, this can be shown as a circle on the sketch. 
For the CAD, a gradient can be added to show metal and or shine, but for the black and white flat sketch, a circle is just fine. A traditional basic jean has five pockets. Two front pockets, a coin pocket, a smaller version of the back pocket normally placed only on one side of the front of the jean, usually the wearer's right side, and two back pockets. The most efficient way to draw the coin and back pockets in Illustrator is to start with the rectangle tool and then tweak the lines as needed. Here's two examples of drawing the coin pocket and back pocket, both starting with the rectangle tool and then using additional tools like the scissors or the add anchor point tool and direct selection to reshape the pocket. Most jean sketches, and when you look at the jean placed flat on the ground, will have a bit of the outseam and the inseam rolling to the front view. And there'll be an edge stitch on both seams as well. On the outseam, the edge stitch will usually stop around the low hip and be finished with a bar tack for reinforcement. On the inseam, the edge stitch runs the length of the seam. The J stitch is the stitch pattern used in constructing the fly on a pair of jeans. It's shaped like the letter J, hence the name, and is often double stitched for reinforcement. There's also at least one bar tack securing the fabric to the zipper near the bottom of the J stitch, again for reinforcement. Some people have a bit of trouble drawing the J stitch in Illustrator, but it is possible to draw a perfect J stitch with the pen tool in just four steps. Step one, draw a straight line from the waistband seam down the front of the pant. Step two, draw a diagonal line to the center front seam and drag direction handles to create the curve of the J. Step three, select the J and click the brush to add the double needle stitching to it. And step four, add bar tacks as necessary. This is the section of the jean directly below the back waistband. And fun fact that a lot of you probably didn't know, this is also where the fit happens. Regular pants or trousers usually have back darts, but the yoke on the jeans is used instead to help taper the waist. Now keep in mind that not including some or all of these details won't make or break your design. At this point, most of these details are included on denim for more nostalgic purposes. And a lot of them that once served a function aren't really needed anymore because the construction of a jean is much more secure than it once was. But I will say for some people who really love denim, the omission of some of these details will deem your design inauthentic. Honestly, it's up to you whether that matters or not. If you're trying to establish yourself as a denim designer or a true denim brand, these details should probably be featured in your designs, at least some of them. But if you just like the idea of having a denim piece in your line and you wanna just give a nod to the classic jean, then I'd say don't feel like any of these features are must-haves. You should design what works for you in your line and what your customer wants. Thanks for watching today's video. If you are a beginner and need to learn Illustrator to start drawing your flat sketches, check out the link in the description to learn more about my beginner course. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.